I'm going to tell you what you need to know to do well in your first round product manager phone interview. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. My name is Alex. If you want to know more about product management business, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And of course, smash the like button and share the video with your friends who may be interested in building or product management. We're going to go over the top things to keep in mind during your phone interview. This is usually the first round interview for product manager right after the recruiter phone screen. The important thing to keep in mind is that every stage of the interview process has the next stage as the immediate goal. So during a phone interview, your goal is to get the on-site interview. Nowadays, it's all done remotely, but it's still an on-site, a more involved process, multiple people interviewing you, and usually a more in-depth interview process. So during that phone interview, your objective is to get the on-site interview, not to get the job, just to get the on-site interview invitation. A lot of the time, the feedback from this phone interview will also weigh in on the ultimate hiring decision, so you want to do as well as you possibly can, but the primary goal is just to make it to the next stage. And the goal of submitting your resume, for instance, is to get the recruiter callback. The goal of the callback or the recruiter conversation is to get that phone interview, that first phone interview. By the way, if you're interested in getting into product management, you wanna make your product manager resume, make sure to check out this video, it goes over exactly that process. So the first thing to keep in mind, assuming we know what our goal is, is to be as enthusiastic and positive as you can. Of course, authentically, fake enthusiasm doesn't really work. And even though it's pretty late at night right now, I'm pretty tired, I'm still pretty excited about recording this video, so this is very real. You've got to make a great impression. You have to be positive, you have to be enthusiastic, you have to be optimistic. You have to be a pleasure to speak with. And that positivity enthusiasm really needs to come through as soon as possible, as authentically as possible, and throughout the interview as well. Needless to say, you're going to back up that positivity and optimism with skills and with the way that you actually answer the questions, but that component is going to be important in order to get you the on-site interview. So any question that is asked, try to find an area in that question that is interesting to you, that is exciting to you, so you can authentically bring excitement and energy into the conversation. Try to lead the conversation into paths that are more interesting to you so that, again, you can authentically bring energy to the conversation. Try to tackle problems head on. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't make excuses. Focus on the positive aspects. Be a pleasure to communicate with. Be friendly, cordial, appreciative. And again, you have to be authentic with this stuff. Faking it will just not get the job done. You want it to come across as authentic. Next important point is time management. You've usually got 40 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes 60 minutes for the entirety of that interview. And if it's a phone interview, the interviewer is going to try to get as much information out of you as possible in order to make a determination of whether you should come in for the on-site or whether to stop the process right there. So you got to manage your time appropriately. Keep an eye on the clock. Ask, how much time should we take for this question? Or better yet, you can actually come up with a structure for the answer. And when you do, you can suggest that we take 5, 7, 10, 15 minutes to discuss and ask if that sounds all right. This way, you're both driving the conversation, setting expectations for how much time an answer should take, but also you're giving yourself a limit of time to work with and managing the overall time of the interview. This is extremely important. You don't want to get stuck in the last five minutes trying to cram an answer in because we have other things that we have to focus during the last five minutes, which we'll get to in a moment. Time management is very important. If you see that the answer is becoming broader than you had anticipated, either try to wrap it up, explain why you're wrapping it up given the time constraints, or explain to the interviewer that actually it's going to take longer time to get into the details here. So we could either take the broader view and cover it in the next two minutes, or we could actually dive in and spend the next five, 10 minutes talking about it, assuming that you've got the time in the interview. I don't want you to cram that interview. You need to clearly understand what your cutoff time and you need to clearly leave three, four minutes for questions for you to ask. You want that to be as comfortable as possible because during that time when you're asking the question and during the wrap up of the last question that you're answering, you need to make a strong, powerful, positive impression on the interviewer. And so you don't want that time to feel rushed. You want to be able to take a moment to ask good questions, to wrap up the stories that you told in your answers, to thank the interviewer for their time, and to show how appreciative you are for them taking the time to interview her and for the chance to actually work at that company, assuming you are excited about that opportunity. What are some ways you can make sure to keep the clock on your side? 
Don't go into long personal stories unless it really helps you answer one of the questions. Don't rehash your resume. Try to watch your tangents as you explore them. Try to bring yourself back. And of course, suggest and work within the confines of a particular structure for every question. Not having structure is actually one of the most common mistakes that candidates make during interviews. I have a separate video talking about the top mistakes that PM candidates make during interviews. Check that out. But not having structure is certainly one of them. So as you're thinking about how to manage the clock efficiently, make sure you're laying out the structure for every answer and you're using that structure for yourself in order to watch the clock. That brings us to the next point, which is take notes on what you're talking about, brief notes, whatever works for you. Feel free to take it on a whiteboard, take it on pen and paper or on the computer, but be aware that if this is going to be a phone interview, then most likely you're going to be on speaker. The interviewer is going to be on speaker. So clanking away on the keyboard might produce a lot of background noise. Additionally, you don't necessarily want to take copious notes, but you do want to take some notes so that you can actually refer back to the structure that you said or refer back to the examples that you listed or something along those lines. And this will also help you with the time management aspect and with the structure. Also, as you're going through the interview, if you think of an interesting question that relates to something that you're talking about right then and there, jot down a note for yourself, put a little star next to it so that you know at the end of the conversation, you can actually use that as a question. And it's interesting to make sense in the flow of the conversation. The next point is demonstrate creative thinking as much as possible. You have a very limited amount of time with this person and you want to hit all of the points of a good candidate, a candidate that makes it to the next round. And one of them is creativity, ability to innovate, ability to think a little bit outside the box. You can think of it as 10x thinking. And I have a separate video talking about 10x thinking for product managers. May be useful for you to check that out as well. But for the purposes of our conversation, you just need to remember to take the creative solution when in doubt, suggest the innovative route as opposed to a more conventional approach. Creativity is important because again, the objective here is to make sure that you are remembered positively. Now, of course, all of these things that we talked about are important, but they're not going to do the job if you don't actually know the material. If you can't answer the basic product manager questions appropriately, analytically, thoughtfully. The top areas are product design, business and strategy, analytics, metrics, and putting it all together. I have several videos talking about how to do well on each one of those types of questions. This one specifically links to the product design question, which is probably the most important aspect of a product manager's job. So as you're having this discussion, as you're in this interview, keep in mind that you're going to need to hit all of these points in order to make a memorable impression. You need to have a positive attitude, enthusiasm, and energy with everything that you do and everything that you talk about. Excitement about the world, about solving problems, about engaging with those questions that the interviewer gave you, about engaging in dialogue, guiding the conversation, and just overall having as fun and interesting conversation as possible. Don't think of it as an interview. Think of it as an interesting conversation with a future colleague. Of course, you need solid, great structure and answers to the product design, strategy questions, analytical questions. You need excellent time management. Make sure you're watching the clock and controlling the flow of the conversation. You need to ask great, insightful, interesting questions. Something that would be actually interesting for the interviewer to answer. By the way, I have a separate video talking about what I look for when hiring product managers. You may find that interesting as well. But when you're thinking about which questions to ask, ideally it would be something that you touched upon during the discussion. So if you talked about a particular product that there's a question about or a related product or a topic of interest for the interviewer or for you, there might be a relevant question that comes out of that. You want to try to ask questions that are meaningful, that are actually interesting to you. Questions that will actually help you be able to make the choice of whether you want to work for this company or not. How does decision making work? How do you convince the team? How often do launches happen? What's the velocity of the decision make? What makes a successful product manager in this team or in this company or in this department or in this organization? Definitely don't ask anything about the work-life balance, culture, or whether you can take certain holidays off or, or some nonsense like that. You want to keep it about the role, about the experience of working on that company, about the experience of working on those products or some related field that you and the interviewer may have connected about. Try to keep it topical, keep it interesting, keep it light. And again, high energy and optimism throughout the experience. If you found the video useful, make sure to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below about what questions you have about phone interviews or on-site interviews or what videos you'd like me to make next. I respond to every comment, so make sure to let me know. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to that little button right there and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos. And if you want to see a day in the life of a Google product manager, check out this video. 
And if you want to learn more about how to do well on interview questions, check out this series. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.